examples egg 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 examples examples exam exam So good day everyone and welcome back to another lesson here in Statistics and Probability, the part 2 of your lesson 4. If you're one of these students who still don't get confidence interval estimate, well, welcome to this video. We're going to discuss it further by using examples. So let's first have a summary of what we have discussed. So we have there case 1, where your population variance is known. We have the confidence interval estimate, the width, and the maximum allowable deviation. Next, you have case 2, population variance is unknown. You have there the confidence interval estimate. We're now looking at the t-table. And then you have your s, which is a point estimate of the population standard deviation. And then you have your width and your maximum allowable deviation. The third one, you still have population variance is unknown. But now you have a special condition, which is your sample size being large enough to invoke central limit theorem or CLT. So in this case, the confidence interval estimate will now be looking at the z-table for its tabular value. And then the numerator of your standard error is going to be s, which is your point estimate of the population standard deviation. So now let's move on to some examples. We have there the first example. The municipal planning officer of Los Baños wants to determine if the average wage of laborers per hour in the municipality is below 320 pesos. A sample of 20 laborers in the municipality yielded a mean of 300 pesos per hour with a population standard deviation of 50 pesos per hour. Using this information, let's construct a 99% confidence interval estimate of the true average wage rate per hour of laborers in the municipality of Los Baños. Looking at this, let's first determine to which case does it belong to. Case 1, case 2, case 3. For your case 1 has a known population variance and your case 2 and 3 has an unknown population variance. From here, from our given, we can see that there is a population variance given because we have a population standard deviation. Di ba nga, ang square root ng variance natin is equal to its standard deviation. Pag skinwear niyo yung standard deviation, ang makukuha naman natin would be variance. So, from this, we can see that we have a known population variance. It falls under case 1. And then, we construct the confidence interval estimate by using sample mean minus plus, looking at the z-table for the tabular value. And then, you have your SE of the point estimate where your numerator is the population standard deviation. After that, we determine the values of your variables. Sample mean, it's given here with a mean of 300 pesos per hour. So write it down. Sample mean equals 300. And then your alpha. Your alpha is computed from your confidence level. So if we have a confidence level of 99%, to compute for the alpha, it's going to be 1 minus 99% divided by 100%. That's equivalent to 1 minus 0 0.99, which is equal to 0. 0, 1. So you have, you're going to write down there alpha equals 0 0.01. The next to determine is the sample size. So we are given with how many laborers? 20 laborers. So our sample size would be 20. For the last one, we're going to determine population standard deviation. So it's given there population standard deviation is equivalent to 50. Two, 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 two. So population standard deviation is multiplied to 50 all over square confidence interval estimate, that's going to be 300, the value. So that's going to be looking for Z sub 0 0.01 over 2 or Z sub 0 0.005. The value of that in the Z table is 2.575. And then, from this expression, you're going to get your lower extreme and upper extreme by getting 300 minus 2.575 times SE. And then, for your upper extreme, 300 plus 2.575 times your SE. This would give us an answer of 280, 320. Or in other way of writing, we can write 280 less than population mean less than 320. Thus, we say, that we are 99% confident that the true average wage rate per hour of laborers in the municipality of Los Baños is between 280 and 320 pesos. Remember, it's between not including 280 and 320. 
So let's move on to the second example. What if we are given with the raw data? What is the 95% confidence interval estimate of the true average weight of the learners? Okay. To do that, first determine if there is a known population variance. From this one, we can just see that there is a given raw data. There is no population variance. So we're going to look at case 2 and case 3. Now, the difference between the two of them is the sample size. So if your sample size is greater than or equal to 30, it falls under case 3. Since we are given a sample size of just 20 learners if, and unknown population variants, we're going to look at case 2. So in case 2, to compute for your confidence interval estimate, you're going to have sample mean minus plus tabular value from your t-table and then se of the point estimate where your s is a point estimate of your population standard deviation since we are given with the raw data we are going to have to compute for the sample mean so your sample mean it's the average so add all the values in your data set divided by the total number of values which in this case is going to be 40 plus 45 plus 46 up to 66 all over 20 your sample mean would then be 56.5 Zero 05. Next, you have your alpha. Your alpha is from your confidence level. So 95% confidence level that denotes an alpha of 0 0.05. Another way to compute for your alpha is getting 100 minus CL all over 100. And the next one, you're going to have to compute for your point estimate of the population standard deviation. That's going to be from your calculators. Your S would be 7.5147. After getting the values of your variables, you are now going to input these values in your confidence interval estimate. So it's going to be 56.05 minus plus tabular value sub 0 0.05 divided by 2 comma n minus 1 multiplied to the SE of the point estimate, which is 7.5148 divided by square root of 20. After inputting them in the expression, you're going to get your lower extreme and upper extreme. The lower extreme would be 56.05 minus, while your upper extreme would be 56.05 plus. After that, computing for this, you're going to end up with the answer 52.533 less than population mean less than 59.567. Thus, we say that we are 95% confident that the true average weight of all learners in this class is between 52.533 and 59.567. Now, we're moving on to our third example. We are given with the number of photos taken using each battery in a digital camera. We have 405, 564, 342, up to 475. We are asked to construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the true mean number of photos taken using the NINH battery. So looking at this given, we still don't have a population variance. So we're looking at case 2 and case 3. Since there are 10 data samples and unknown population variance, we are looking at case 2, where we use the confidence interval estimate of sample mean minus plus tabular value from the t-table and then your SE. Similar as to what we did in the previous example, we're going to compute for the sample mean by adding all of the given data, dividing it by the total number of data. So you have there 460.7. Seven. Your alpha is from your confidence level. So a confidence level of 95% would give an alpha of 0 0.05. Next, you have the sample size, which is 10. And your S computed from your calculator, that's 63.0274. Placing it on your confidence interval estimate, you have your sample mean, which is 460.7. Minus plus, you have your tabular value, T sub 0 0.05 divided by 2 comma the degree of freedom n minus 1 multiply to the SE of your point estimate which is 63.0274 all over square root of 10. So we are going to get the tabular value by looking at the T table. So it's going to be looking at the T sub 0 0.025 comma 9 as your degree of freedom and then it's going to have a value of 2.262. After this expression, you're going to get your lower extreme and then your upper extreme. Lower extreme is 460.7 minus, and then your upper extreme has 460.7 plus. 
in putting all these expressions into the calculator, you're going to have the final answer of 415.616,505.784 or in other way of writing it, 415.616 is less than the population mean which is also less than to 505.784. Thus, we say that we are 95% confident that the true mean number of photos taken using the NIMH battery is between 416 and 505 photos. This is because we can have the number of photos as 415.6 and 505.7. So we round up your lower extreme while we round down our upper extreme. So in this na magiging 415.6, magiging 416. In this na 505.784, magiging 505. Now let's move on to our last example. In our last example, we have a quality engineer officer evaluates the condition of the machine by using a random sample of 39 runs, which resulted to the following diameters. So you now have here a table where you have the first column as diameter and then the second column as frequency. So ibig sabihin yan, merong dalawang 12, merong limang 13, merong 15 na 14, and so on. So using this information, let's construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the true average diameter of the cylindrical metal pieces produced. Looking first, if we have a known population variance, voila. So we are looking at case 2 and case 3. Remember that case 3, there is a specific condition, sample size large enough to invoke central limit theorem, or your sample size greater than or equal to 30. In this example, we are given with 39 runs, which is a sample size of 39. So this falls in case 3 where you have unknown population variance and sample size as 39, which is large enough to invoke central limit theorem. So construct the confidence interval estimate of case 3. We're going to use sample mean minus plus tabular value of Z multiplied to the SE of your point estimate where your numerator is still going to be a point estimate of your population standard deviation. So given the diameters and frequencies, the first thing that we have to compute for is the sample mean. Now your sample mean here, it's not just simply adding all the diameters kasi we now have the column of frequency. So what you're going to do is 12 times 2 plus 13 times 5 plus 14 times 15, up to 17 times 2. Now, the sum of all of that divided by the total number of frequencies or the total number of sample size, which is 39. So you're going to yield an answer of 14.43589744. In our statistics class, let's just round it off to four decimal places, which will yield the result of an approximately 14.4359. Nine. Next, you have your alpha level, which is taken from your confidence level. Since we have a confidence level of 95%, we have an alpha level of 0 0.05. Next, you have your sample size, which is 39. For the last one, we have your S, which is computed from your scientific calculator, which would give an answer of 1.1722.18405, approximately 1.1722. Inputting the values of these variables into your confidence interval estimate, you're going to have 14.4359 minus plus the tabular value from your Z, which is going to be Z sub 0 0.05 over 2, or is also equal to Z sub 0 0.025. Multiply your SE, which is 1.1722, your S, divided by square root of 39, or your square root of N. After that, getting your Z value, you have the Z tabular value of 1.96. And then getting your lower extreme and your upper extreme, you have 14.4359 minus for lower extreme. And then you have 14.4359 plus for your upper extreme. This would give us an answer of 14.068 as your lower extreme and 14.8038 as your upper extreme. So a few closing points for this. We have case 1, population variance is known. So you have your confidence interval estimate, tabular value from Z, numerator of your SE as population standard deviation. Case 2, 
population variance is unknown. Tabular value is from P, the numerator of your standard error as S, which is the point estimate of population standard deviation. And then you have case 3. Population variance is still unknown. However, sample size is large enough to invoke central limit theorem or CLP. Tabular value is taken from Z. And then your numerator for SE of the point estimate is S. So that is it for examples falling under the confidence interval estimates. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Pusna. Pusna.